Hi, everybody. This could be one of the uh, silliest things I've ever done. But to our book, More Advice from a Call Center Geek, is actually doing pretty well. There's a lot of you who have paid the $9.99 for it, but there's a lot of you, for some reason or not, won't name any names that have not. But I know I still want to get the content out to you guys. Um, so we've been pressured a little bit to do an audio book, and I have really no interest in it, right? To sit at my desk and read into a microphone or to you know, pay somebody who has a much better voice than me um, to do that. We really didn't have any interest until we started thinking about it a little bit more and decided to do a little uh, story time with Tom. And it, it's a little bit, I guess, more of a fun way to get to, to get an audio book out. For the next 25 nights, because there's 25 chapters in the book, we're going to read, I'm going to read one chapter. Uh, I'll post it up on YouTube, and then we'll post it on LinkedIn. And then at the end, we'll put all of them together, and basically we'll kind of create our own, own audio book in a, in a little bit more fun fashion. So having said that, let's begin more advice from a call center geek, rethinking call center operations. Chapter one, why a call center book? Think about this customer interaction. A customer calls into the call center for XYZ company. The customer starts in the IVR. There's a hint of frustration that begins to build when our customer has to go through five prompts to get to the right department. The customer is officially frustrated when the IVR does not understand her when she keeps saying, change bill date, over and over. The customer is now angry, and she screams, agent, while pressing zero as hard as she can on her phone. After finally hearing her, the IVR say, you are now being transferred, our pretend customer gets a call center associate that is disinterested, non-empathetic, and starts to frustrate the customer even more with his tone. Even though the associate is not giving a great voice experience, he was trained on what to do with this type of call and he goes through the motions and handles the customer's issue to a T. The talk time is actually very short. The issue was handled on the first call. That's a great call, right? World class, some would say. Using our outdated KPIs, on paper, it does look like a great call. The call was answered with in an 80-30 SLA. Check. The call was handled within the appropriate handle time. Check. The first, there was first call resolution on the call as well. Check. Now I know what some of you are thinking there was no NPS survey done after the call. In my example here, but, but kind of bear with me. The experience was terrible for the customer. That's the bottom line. This customer most likely is headed straight to Twitter or Facebook and they won't be posting a positive review. There are so many things that call center managers and executives do wrong, myself included. We look at dollars and cents and not the customer's experience. We look at age-old metrics to define a world-class center. We train on how our associates should navigate a CRM and what screen they should be on, but do not educate on empathy, delight, and tone. Because of this, most call center experiences do stink. You know that's true. The majority of centers are run poorly. They are not a fun place to work. They provide an average service at best, have high turnover, and looked at as a low-paying, terrible job. Why? This is why I wrote this book. Let's try to change all that. With all the new technologies out there that claim to give your customers a world-class experience, why do so many companies have below, MP, below average NPS scores and legions of negative social media posts? In the era of social media, we are now getting a true gauge of who is offering amazing service and which companies are not. And the reason is not the technology. The reason goes much deeper. It goes to the culture of the organization, but more to the point, it goes to the culture of the call center. In this book, I want to make you think. I want to change long-standing behaviors. I want you to ponder the way that things have done, been done forever and ask why. I want you to create something unique for your industry. My goal is to give you some of the needed tools that you need to change the culture of your call center. Customer experience is the next corporate battlefield. So who's this book for? I'm writing this for contact center managers looking for something different. Managers that want to create a call center culture that is unique and customer slash employee centric. I'm also writing this for the next generation of call center managers. The world you see in the next 30 years will differ greatly from the call center world that most of us have come to grow up in. I hope together we can prepare for this with some newer thinking. My name is Tom Lairk. I am the CEO of Expedia Interaction Marketing. We are a growing 500 seat USA BPO call center in Pennsylvania. I've worked in call centers my entire life, 
from the seat of a rep to the IT technical side to supervisory and management roles, all the way to owning and running my own center. I've worked with a range of organizations from Fortune 50 financial services organizations to small startups looking to outsource for the first time. I've seen a lot, some good, some not so good. This book is a testament to all the awesome things I've seen in the call center that can happen when it's run the right way. I'm not a writer by trade, nor am I a reader, I guess. I write how I talk. I hope you feel the, the realness and the passion I have for the contact center and for the customer experience. I will shy away from talking about what new technology you must have. This technology is always changing and I want this book to help you no matter what technology you're using or will be using through the, as the years go. Besides, we've already agreed technology does not make an excellent contact center experience on its own. Before we get into this, I want to tell you my little story. This is where I came from. In 1985, a small call center was started by my parents with 10 employees in Erie, Pennsylvania. It was a family business where I grew up at. I was nine years old at the time. Business was small but steady, allowing for our company with a reputation for quality to take hold. The company grew over the years, and a new 75-seat center was opened in 1990 to support an influx of new business. In those days, most of the business was dealing with outbound credit card sales for major banking institutions. When I came on board, full-time during college it was 1994 I just expand we had just expanded to over 200 seats and business was good I started with third shift positions in our IT area learning the business from the ground up I had to work my way through the organization nothing was handed to me the culture of that was that of a close-knit family many employees were there since the start and the management team had been together for years by this time this group of individuals was known to me as the as being closest of, uh, uh, of any family member. We treated each other that way. In those days, it was a great place to work with a strong core group of people. 2000s. As the early 2000s ticked on, the organization hit its stride. At our peak, we had over 700 call center employees and revenues well over $20 million. Things were going really well. We had many high profile Fortune 150 clients, including many of the top financial institutions in the United States which as anyone knows in the BPO outsourcing business, uh, getting those type of clients is the best of the best. I was five years into my job of running the day-to-day -day operations of the call center floor. We implemented many philosophies that I strongly believed in, and we were prospering. A management training program was put into place which allowed us to average over six years of tenure for all of our tenure of all of our middle management. Turnover was low for the call center industry due to the family style culture that we tried to uh, foster. We tried to work with our associates to progress them up the ladder. Things were going great until 2008. 2008, when the Great Depression hit, we called it the Great Depression. It's called the Great Recession, but for us it was the Great Depression. We lost over 60% of our business due to financial organizations who are now going under TARP and gutting their marketing budgets. It was a difficult time. I thought that we would get through the troublesome times ahead because of the tight-knit management team that we had and all the battles that we have fought and won through the years. By this time, most of us have worked together for going on 15 years and knew each other for much longer. That was a naive mistake made by me. This time it would be different. People scattered. It started with our IT personnel, then on to our production staff, then on to client services and HR. It was as if a negative wave had taken over the team and it could not be stopped. Management were looking for new jobs at the first sign of these troubled waters. In 2010, the company was sold. This was the most difficult and eye-opening time for me. I was still working at the place I love. The new owner stripped me of most of my authority. You know, being part of the past owning family meant I could not be trusted in their eyes. People I thought were my friends, people I fought with side by side for almost 20 years were now positioning themselves for a power takeover. These were the same people we fought and did everything we could to save their jobs when the new owners came into the new picture. The same people we took into our inner circle and worked with for almost two decades turned overnight. Losing years of friendship over a little bit of money and power was something I could not fathom. Not everyone thinks as I do. Again, I was naive. February 8th, 2011. The plot was finally settled as I was driving home after work on February 8th, 2011. I received a call that I was being let go. 
After 25 years of being a part of the company, all the new management team could muster was a one minute phone call. They listened to the wrong people, but that's enough of that. The reason I tell you this is not for sympathy, but to tell you that I have learned that life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you react to it. That is a factual truth. Instead of laying down and taking defeat, I got together with some descendants of the, of the company that was let go. Knowing that we could do a better job than most in the call center industry from all the centers that we had seen and worked with, including the management team we were leaving, we started anew. Greatest decision I ever made. Expedia Interaction Marketing was born a couple months later we decided we would not be burdened with the overhead and the cost of an older organization that we could do things differently. We would embrace new technology if afforded us through the cloud. We would think our philosophy is money ball for the call center. Many of those procedures we will discuss in the following chapters. We, we gazed into the future and have looked to position ourselves to, to a, a place to capitalize where we see customer interactions heading 5, 10, 15 years from now. Social media, API development, video technologies, chatbot, texting, AI, world-class inbound, outbound sales and service could all be fostered to grow what we think is the new definition of what the contact, or contact center should be in today's market. We could reinvent ourselves, and boy, did we ever. In the first years of Expedia, we are honored to receive the Disrupt Erie Startup of the Year Award uh, for Northwestern Pennsylvania, and we are invited to join the Nice and Contact ICBC board. The ICBC is a select group of Nice and Contact customers selected to join as trusted advisors to help Nice and Contact validate ideas for new products, features, and plans for future innovations. Expedia is different. I want to show you how your contact center can be different too. Book format. The format of this book is very casual. We will start with talking about hiring culture. Culture is the differentiator and the organizations that get it right have a huge advantage. Do you want to know how to hire the best call center and sales representatives? Want to know how to motivate and promote the right way? We will discuss. Your culture is your beacon. Next, we will talk about the education of your associates, management training, and quality assurance. All the things that are the lifeblood of a call center and concepts you have to have in place before we can talk about actual operations. In the last part of the book, we will talk about the actual operations of the contact center, how you should meet and greet associates, how you should prepare for each day, more importantly, with operations, how we should praise associates, deal with confrontation, and have fun on the call center floor. Actual fun? I have some other miscellaneous topics I think will interest you as well as we, uh, as we get more to the back of the book. This includes doing a full cost analysis um, of your contact center to looking at the differences of outsourcing location and costs throughout the world. This is the fast read, hopefully. Take notes. Highlight this bad boy up. Just kind of do it kind of verbally, I guess. Let's improve your call center. That's chapter one. I'll be back tomorrow with chapter two, guys.